Wow. <laughs> Welcome back, guys. This is the Jake Ellenboga channel, and I am covering the last episode of the Loki Disney Plus series made by Marvel Studios. Uh, before we get into it, be sure to subscribe, drop a comment, let's discuss this, and hit the like button. Uh, but wow, um, I'm not going to go with my usual route of, you know, kind of breaking this episode down. I'm just going to give you, you know, my reaction to everything. I mean, a quick synopsis. Uh, and before I get into that, this is your first and only reminder uh, and warning that this is spoiler territory. I am not responsible for spoiling the ending of Loki until, well, I'm just not. So if, if you hear this and you continue to watch, I appreciate you supporting the channel. But if you haven't seen the episode yet, I highly recommend you do because, again, spoilers ahead. I'm giving you a chance to click out right now. If you haven't, do that now. Okay, so now I'm going to get into this. Spoilers ahead again. This is Loki Episode 6, uh, and it is just, wow. It, I mean, well, you know, you start off, a quick synopsis, you start off, they're at the the castle that we saw. We, we had a feeling that it was going to be something pertaining to either Doctor Doom uh, and it looks kind of like Castle Doom, or it was going to be something, you know, in regards to Kang. Well, of course, we find out that it's something in regards to Kang. They get into the castle, which I'd like to point out that there's some uh, interesting gold markings all over this said castle. And what I find interesting is, you know, the gold markings are what you can find in the um, the Eternals uh, trailer, you know, with the recent trailer drop with their ship so i'm not saying it's like you know 100 percent, you know identical but i'm also not saying that that doesn't have something to do with it seeing as the eternals trailer just dropped within the last month of them showing this on loki then we finally get he who remains who is uh, the part of everything he is essentially the Willy Wonka of the Chocolate Factory, and his factory is actually the TVA, and he's a variant of Kang. Now, He Who Remains is a member of the Marvel comic book series. He is in there. Kind of a not really a huge character. Powerful, but not really a huge character. Um, so this is what they did. They took him by he who remains. That's how they call him. Uh, but what he really is, is a mortis, which is one of the many, uh, variations of Kang the Conqueror. He's of course, uh, played by Jonathan Majors, who was asked, is he going to be a part of this show? And he was very, I thought his reaction was very suspect. Uh, I don't think he did the best job of saying that, yeah, you know, I'm not going to be part of the show. Like, he, But, like, what else are you going to say, you know? But I guess it's just the way it came off. Like, he didn't seem as convincing to me. So I was pretty sure he was going to at least have an after credit scene because all along I really felt it was Kang. And then, of course, Marvel, in Marvel fashion, took the trailer and started, you know, they added a scene that we never see in this episode with the whole, it looks like King Loki of Asgard scene. And so I started self-doubting and I was like, hmm, okay, maybe it actually is King Loki at the end of the way. Maybe he's behind everything, but nope. Nope, it was Kang all along. <laughs> now, before they got into that, though, we run into Miss Minutes, which I suspected would be either Kang or something having to do with Kang, which, of course, it you know, it was. And Miss Minutes is mainly a test because Miss Minutes offers both Sylvie and Loki all of everything that they've ever wanted in the same timeline. And they say that, you know, he who remains is, you know, behind everything and can can make this work and everything. They say no. They move on. And then they meet the Jonathan Majors, he who remains, who's also a uh, They never said a mortis in the, the show, but he's basically a mortis. So they meet him. They go. They talk. He explains everything. He explains basically that he's Nathaniel Richards. So we get a link to Fantastic Four. 
um, he just he explains it all. He talks about his, you know, the multiversal war. He talks about his connection to uh, other Kangs and how, you know, the the wars are actually the whole time that the TVA was depicting multiversal war. They were talking about all of these Kangs, uh, you know, because I don't necessarily think he's a horrible dude. It does seem like he's trying to keep balance. I mean, he's he's the villain in this. But at the same time, he's not horrible. Like, he's not, uh, you know, super evil. However, King the Conqueror is. You know, however, uh, Rama Tut, another variation of Kang, is. So this is the problem. And so he's basically saying that this is why they keep the flow of time. They have the sacred timeline. It, you know, it goes like this. Because this start as soon as it starts having branch timelines, you're going to get all those Kangs unleashed. So, Sylvie does not care. Loki does care. Loki's starting to feel like there's something up here. So, he gives them an opportunity. He can either be killed, they can kill him, and he'll just, you know, all these Kangs will emerge and the multiversal war will start and it will be madness. Where have we heard that before? Or, number two, they both can rule at the end of time and... They they can basically control the TVA. Now, there's a lot that goes into this because I'd like to point out that Kang has already seen everything going on. So when Sylvie tries to swing at him, you guys already saw if you're watching this, he already knows what's going to happen. He has it. He's not doing it. He's not teleporting. He already has it pre-programmed in his temp pad, which is it's not really a temp pad. It's like he has like this wrist like. It's a different type of tempad, so to speak. So he already has a program. That's why he keeps moving around and things like that. He knows exactly what they're going to do. But when he says to them, I like he basically is like, I don't know what's going to happen anymore. At that point, Loki and Sylvie should have looked out the window and seen that the timelines were branching. But they did not do that. So they get into a little scuffle. Loki's really worried about everything that's going on. He thinks that there, there's actually going to be a legit blowback if they kill him. And Sylvie's been looking at this moment for a while. And she made sure she didn't tease the audience. She made sure that, you know, this is her goal. And no one will get in her way. Loki and her share a kiss, all of that. And then she kicks him right to the TVA. As they after they get into a fight, she kicks him right into the TVA, into a portal, gone, and she kills Immortus. Now, how did this branch timeline happen? You guys saw Ravona Renslayer having the the confrontation with uh, Mobius, who comes back, and then of course you have uh, them going back in time to 2018 when. Ravona was a teacher. That's her origin. And B-15 basically shows everything that's going on and how that's her and Ravona. Like, she tries to basically get pit the whole TVA against the TVA. So the Minutemen all find out about this. And for whatever, whatever they did, it's shown off screen because you can see the universe, the, the branch timelines just splitting. Well, that's the Minutemen fighting back because they realize they're all variants. So we never see it on camera, but we have to assume that that is a huge thing because she is the judge and she actually ends up leaving to this location that I would imagine is going to be Kang in the future or maybe in the past. We'll see. I, I We have not seen the last of Ravona Renslayer. But all this stuff happening is a direct response to finding that out. But what puts it over the edge, while there's a lot of branch timelines, what puts it over the edge is when she kills Immortus. Because he was what was keeping the timeline steady and the proper flow and was keeping the sacred timeline so it wouldn't happen. So we're going to have all these variations of Kangs, and they're probably going to be throughout the, the next... 
a bunch of movies. They're going to be in the, the Multiverse of Madness, I would imagine, at least in some capacity. We already know that Kang the Conqueror is 100% in Quantumania, which comes out in February of 2023. So we're going to have all sorts of Kangs. And we know the connection. I've said it many times based on the comics, the connection to Ravona Rensselaer being the lover of Kang. But on top of it, she also becomes Terminatrix. I don't know if we'll get into that in this story, but that's also interesting. So at the end of the day, what ends up happening is the multiverse of madness happens. We we get back to Loki. Loki was kicked through the portal. Sylvie's crying. Loki's crying. But then Loki's like, wait a minute. There's a bigger purpose here for me. I need to warn everybody. They have no idea what's going to happen. And so he goes, he tries to find Mobius in the records department. He finds him and Mobius is like, I don't know who you are. And he looks over and he sees the statue of Kang at the TVA. That was not there before. So that's how it ends. Also ends with a big stamp of approval and saying that it will return for season two. So let's talk a little bit about that. Season two. When is it going to take place? It has to take place before March 22nd. It has to finish before March 22nd, I would imagine, because the Multiverse of Madness is then. So, you know, I, I think it's either going to come after the Multiverse of Madness or they're going to try and fit it in. I don't know how they'll do that. There's just not a lot of time, but I'm sure they have a plan of attack. Uh, this is a fantastic show. You know, props all the way around. They did an incredible job. The casting was amazing. The acting was amazing. Shout out to Jonathan Majors for absolutely stealing the show um, in this one. But what I, what I will say is that this is really interesting. A lot of things, my mind started to spin. Uh, basically, this is not the end of a lot of things because this opens up the door for everything. The Fox deal, I think they needed a multiverse. They needed a cool way to bring in the X-Men the Fantastic Four, uh, you know, what have you. The Sony-verse with Venom and Moby, um, not, Mo M not Mobius, but Mor uh, Michael Morbius, uh, you know, they all those guys, right? We're probably going to see Ghost Rider at some point. We're getting a Blade movie in 2023, I believe. You know, all sorts of things happening. Moon Knight. How else are you going to tell the story of all these characters? Are you going to really act like Deadpool wasn't around? Like, you needed this, so they got it, and they used Loki to do it, which is great. But here's the thing. It makes you wonder. Like, with the timeline, where does Loki fall in the MCU timeline? And I know, I know it's now a multiverse, but what I'm saying is we do know that Spider-Man Far From Home comes after the events of WandaVision and after the events of Falcon Winter Soldier. What we do not know is where Loki falls into that. Because Loki happens right after the time heist in Endgame, which is actually in 2012 in his timeline. This can get really confusing. But have they already beaten Thanos? Time runs different here in the TVA. What does that mean? Does that mean... I mean, we find out in this exact episode that Mobius and Ravona are two eons old. So what is the TVA? And, and honestly, did he get pushed into the TVA that's the actual TVA? Did it get rewritten because of Kang? Or did they go into an alternate TVA? Because I think what ended up happening is when Immortus had his, you know, his wristband, tempad, whatever you want to call it, he had everything pre-programmed. I think all along it was not Charlie in the, you know, it was not Willy Wonka in the Chocolate Factory here. I think all along he was going to dupe them. He wins either way. But this idea that he was going to have them take over the TVA, I think he was going to teleport them back to the TVA and tell them, no, no, it's all good. But it would have been to the wrong TVA. The TVA that Loki fell into was pushed into by Sylvie. Sylvie did not know this. She thought he was sent she was sending him to the correct TVA, the one that was being overthrown. Instead, he goes to the TVA that is losing their minds. It's full panic, and Kang runs it. So, and they don't know who he is. So that is another thing. 
But where does this fall in the timeline? Please drop a comment if you have any idea, because I do not. Does this come after Spider-Man? Does this come before the new Spider-Man? Because this changes everything. What if this happened before Spider-Man? What if this happened before Spider-Man? And when Mysterio comes to, he comes into the story and he talks about the multiverse. What if he actually was warning them? Was on, like, that was a legitimate thing. Something about that was real, but his deceptiveness ruined it. His his warning came and went. What if it was something like that? Like, I think the possibilities are truly endless with this type of concept, and that's why I love it. I know it can get messy with the multiverse. I mean, you can look. I think some have done it right. I think some have done it wrong. I would definitely give credit. If you look at the uh, the Dragon Ball series, if you've never seen it, you don't know what I'm talking about. But Dragon Ball, um, they actually ended up having the multiverse shown up in Dragon Ball Super, which is the newest TV series. But it's not always going to be great. And I think pretty much anything MCU does at this point, Marvel Studios and company do, it's going to work because I think they get it. And so I think this is going to work. My only complaint, or not complaint, but worry, is the casual fan. Because if it's tripping out my mind, what is it going to do to the casual fan? That's the thing. Because you might start to lose, and not lose people. I don't think people will stop watching. But you might start to lose people in the complexity of everything. And Kang the Conqueror is a super complex character. So that's also something to keep in mind. Uh, I mean, you're talking about Kang the Conqueror bringing in uh, you know, the human torch in the comics and, and what have you. I mean, there's a lot here. So it's really interesting. It begs the question, truly, when does Loki take place in the timeline? I understand it's broken up into infinite branch timelines, but where does it take place? And on top of that, how much did this show impact the next show that's coming up in August that I will be doing videos on, What If? Because that's also something. What if appears to be canon based on the multiverse? But is it just a spin-off that they're having fun with because they made it, you know, they they basically made it okay to explore it? Or is it something more? And that's the thing. Unfortunately, you know, Marvel can't really expand on the T'Challa Star Lord concept because, you know, of course Chadwick is gone. But it's definitely interesting. Could they expand? Could they move that into live action? We'll see. But that is going to do it. It's been a lot of fun covering this show. The show has been incredible. Um, I can't wait for What If. I can't wait for Multiverse of Madness, Spider-Man. I'm really curious to see if Shang-Chi, where that takes place in the timeline, does this have anything to do with it? Is that why, uh, you know, is that why um, Abomination is in it? Because the the multiverse? Is that how Eternals just showed up? Like, I'm really now, like, I, I was already very curious, but this just, this just really does everything. I mean, we thought we were getting a multiverse somewhat after, you know, the events of episode two, and then it kind of calmed down. But now it's full-fledged. And I don't see this going away. There, it makes no sense to get rid of the multiverse. You know, I, I think they're going to keep it around for like 20, 20 to 30 years. If they keep it around, they'll have plenty of content. There's still so many villains that they can bring in. So many characters they haven't even thought of. And there's so many characters that they have thought of and they just haven't brought in yet. So I think the possibilities are endless. They're not going to run out of content. Um but I, I can see, you know, it can get messy. So they're going to have to be careful. But again, that's going to do it for me. I'm Jake Ellenbogen. Hope you guys enjoyed. If you guys haven't watched this show already and you just like watching these and spoiling it for you, you're a maniac. But I do appreciate it. Um, if you guys have watched this, please do yourself a favor. Head on over to our Discord channel. Link is in the description and will be in the comment section pinned. I want to talk to all of you. We have an MCU-only section in the Discord channel. That's where you want to go. All spoiler talk, all of that, uh, that is all in there. So if you want to talk, you're having a hard time, you're sitting on your hands, not knowing what to do, that's what you can do. But this is going to do it for me. You guys take care. 
I'll talk to you guys soon. Later.